So in this video, we're going to be going through and comparing all of the running costs over the last 12 months for my lovely naturally aspirated V12 Dad B9 and James's glorious naturally aspirated V12 Ferrari F12. My name's Ben and welcome to Dadcast. <laughs> Hang on. There's this one sleeping in it. So having owned multiple JDM Legends and then a Lotus Elise, I tell you, moving to the Aston has been a splash of financial cold water in the face. <laughs> really quite shocking. You think owning an Aston Martin's expensive? Well, try owning a Ferrari. You can take the running and maintenance costs and double them. Now this is something that I've heard countless times over the years. And up until now, I've kind of believed. But is it true? Let's find out. Let's start with fuel costs, shall we? So the best I've achieved on a run in the Dad B9 is 21.3 miles per gallon. And the best that James has ever achieved out of the F12 is 15.5. But to put that into perspective, to fill up the Ferrari's 92 litre tank with super unleaded at £1.65 per litre costs around £152. In the Aston, with its 80 litre tank, it costs around £132. But what's really interesting is the absolute best range you could get out for full tank on a Ferrari is around 313 miles, whereas in the Aston, 375 miles. It's quite interesting, isn't it? So to keep things simple, let's just say both cars have done 5,000 miles over the last 12 months. I know James has done more than that for his trips to Scotland and whatnot, but the cost for 5,000 miles in the Ferrari, around 2,350 pounds. In the Aston Martin for 5,000 miles, 1,800 pounds. Road tax for both cars is exactly the same. The full fat, 630 pounds. But servicing, there's got to be a difference here, right? So in the Aston Martin for a minor service, around 600 pounds and a major, 1,000 pounds. In the Ferrari, a minor is going to cost around 1,000 pounds and a major, around 1,600 pounds. Insurance for the F12 is likely to be around 1,500 pounds. And for the Aston, I mean, I pay less than a third of that around 400 pounds, but that's likely linked to the values of the cars. I'm sure if this was a Vanquish S or, or something, a more expensive Aston, it'd probably be pretty similar. Interestingly, I have just reviewed a Ferrari FF where the owner of this car pays just 700 pounds for his insurance. So it's not looking like double just yet. However, we haven't started getting into when things go wrong yet, have we? And that's when I reckon the Ferrari is really gonna cost the big bucks. So let's start with the Aston. What has this cost me over the last 12 months in servicing, consumables, and maintenance? Well, I had to screw in the rear tire, didn't I? Then I had the SRS module fail, had to replace that. I had to replace all 12 spark plugs and coils and service and a few other bits. And it came to around 4,700 pounds. Yikes. However, how much has James spent on this mighty F12 over the last 12 months? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put my sunglasses on for this because I reckon the number is gonna be so blindingly big, it's gonna, uh, what? 5,700 pounds. 5,700 pounds? Is that it? You must have just been lucky though. What does that include? It includes two new rear tires and he even re-trimmed some of the leather dash, all within 5,700 pounds. And he even managed to fix a rattle at the cost of 900 pounds within that as well. Jeez. I mean, they're both Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, but it seems like it's a hell of a lot more rubber here, but they're exactly the same price. A thousand pound for a full set all round on both cars. That's really annoying. It's like if you've got really small feet in your size six, but you still pay the same as someone who's got like size 14 shoes that actually take twice as much material. So what are the scores on the doors? How much has the Aston cost over the last 12 months compared to the Ferrari? Well, the Aston, insurance, tax, fuel, maintenance costs, servicing, all in 7,530 pounds. And the Ferrari, 10,180. So the V12 Aston has cost me around 75% of the cost of running a V12 Ferrari over the last 12 months. So does this mean that the myth is busted that it costs twice as much to run a Ferrari as an Aston? Well, I don't know, maybe. Obviously this is purely anecdotal. We've just got two examples of cars here today and I'm sure you could have another example of an Aston that's cost next to nothing and a Ferrari that's been horrendous, but then vice versa as well. But it's definitely interesting and food for thought but I did genuinely think that I was still worlds away from being able to stomach and mentally deal with the running costs of a Ferrari. But maybe I'm closer than I thought. 
How much is a 612 out of interest? 70. Around 70,000 pounds. Oh, okay, yeah, no. I'm still quite a way away from being able to afford to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> Costs aside though, out of interest, if someone said to you you could drive a Ferrari or an equivalent value, Aston Martin, around for a year, which would you pick? The Ferrari or the Aston? Let me know in the comments below. And the final interesting thing I wanna leave you with is yeah, the Aston's cost 75% of the running cost of the Ferrari over the last 12 months, but you can buy one of these for 25% of the value that you can buy one of these for. These are around 160,000. You can get a really nice DB9 for around 40. So 25% of the value of that, but it's still 75% of the running costs. However, in this 12 month snapshot, we did not compare other consumables such as brakes. In the DB9, it's possible to get a full set of Brembo discs and pads fitted all around for about 2000 pounds. Whereas in the F12, with its carbon ceramics, pads alone will cost you £2,000. And if you needed to replace your carbon ceramic discs, a full set would be about ten to £12,000. However, later Aston Martin models did come with carbon ceramics. And the final comparison would be warranties. You can get a DB9 extended timeless warranty for about two and a half to £3,000 a year. In the F12, a Ferrari warranty would cost you about £5,000. However, that does include an annual service. So the costs do seem to be following in line with what we've been looking at today. If you'd like to know more about the ownership experience of this F12, head over to JM on Cars. Thank you to James for once again letting me feature this magnificent Ferrari. It would have been really interesting to have done this exercise today, but with a Vanquish S, which is much more comparable to the F12. And, you know, maybe the running cost would have been even closer to the running cost of the Ferrari. But look, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. Check out, I've done loads of exciting cool dad car reviews. And I'll see you on the next one.